Hello, Hello YouTube, YouTube, and welcome, welcome to, to your, I think, 15th Microsoft Visual Basic 2010 Express tutorial. And um, in this tutorial, I will be teaching you how to quit loops early um, so it doesn't have to completely go through the loop and be really inefficient. So um, I got a lot here going on on my screen, um, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Basic open up that project that we've been using for our last couple of tutorials come over to form one let's go ahead and add a new button and let's set the name to button quitting loops and then we'll come down here and change the text to uh, I don't know quitting a for loop and if you haven't guessed it yet we're going to be quitting a for loop so go ahead and resize this a bit um, this is going to be the last no this isn't I'm going to teach you how to quit how to quit um, do loops in the next tutorial and then um, we'll be moving on to different types of tutorials um, that will start getting more towards like intermediate stuff um, so just remember to subscribe and uh, the, the tutorials will keep coming so um, I'll just blab it on there for a second let's go ahead and start typing our code so we're going to come down here to the code for quitting a for loop just double click on it and um, sorry about that what we're going to start off by doing what we always do is clear the list and then we'll come down below that and we're gonna start our for loop now you ought to comment here we're gonna list each for I'm um, not each for loop what am I talking about we're gonna list each folder in the C drive now I don't know if I've covered this in my other tutorials but you can comment just by doing just by pressing um, one quotation mark and it'll comment that line and then when you go down there it just once you press enter it starts a new line and um, types code and what a comment basically is if you haven't learned it by now um, it's just basically stuff that you can write in there that your program skips over it's not part of the code but when you're writing your source code and typing it out you can look at the comments and it makes it easier to understand so we're going to start off by listing each folder in the C drive with a for loop so we're going to do it's a for each loop so for each string folder as string in my dot computer dot file system dot get directories and then we're just gonna go ahead and do C colon backslash and that's really long and complicated but I'll explain it here in a second. You see when we press enter as always it'll create the next for us which tells it to go back up to the top of the loop. So we're going to go ahead and add that to our list data which is this box right here. So list data dot items dot add and then we'll just add string folder. Okay so now that we've added that items that item to the list okay well, I think I put first data list data okay there we go so now we added a string folder to our list and um, down inside of our for loop we're not going outside of it so we're gonna nest an if statement so the, the if statement is nested inside the for loop the for each loop so we start off by typing if string dot compare and then we're just going to compare string folder to a string so we'll do c colon backslash desktop backslash programming tutorials okay so and then true and then we'll just 
equals zero then okay I typed all that out didn't really explain it while I was going but I'll explain it now so we started an if loop uh, you should know what that is so if string dot compare so we're comparing the variable string folder which is a string um, to this string right here which is c colon backslash desktop programming tutorials I don't know if that's right yet um, I'm pretty sure that's what I have and then um, if that is true then um, if it's if if it's true then it sets it equal to zero um, and if it's false then it'll set it equal to one so um, we compare the string string folder to program tutorials and um, test it if it's true then come down before that you can see it automatically adds end if so um, down inside of our if statement we're gonna do message box dot show and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the user um, that we found what we're looking for and that we're going to exit the loop so I've found it I'm exiting the loop now and then we'll just go ahead and set the title of that uh, message box to loops okay so now what we're going to do is going to quit the loop early so it may seem like it's going to be really complicated but it's really simple all you have to type is exit for so what that does is it ends the for loop so I'll go ahead and run this program come back and explain the code one more time and that'll be it for the tutorial so let's come over here there's all of our code Okay, so now let's go ahead and type nested loops for a second. You don't have to pay attention to any of that. And then when we type quitting a for loop, you can see it clears the list. Starts off by clearing the list. Um, it starts our for loop. And. Okay, hold on. I did that wrong. We can't, we can only do one directory, so we'll just go like that. Okay, now we'll run it. Okay, I don't have C colon desktop. Okay, I'll just do I'll do C colon backslash fraps. Sorry about this. Obviously I don't know what's on my C drive. Okay. So now when we run it, quitting a for loops. You see we press um quitting a for loop. And uh, it doesn't look like it, but it actually cleared the list because there's nothing in there. So uh, it just does that automatically in each one of our, every time you click a button, it, it clears the list. So you can see what's going on. You can see it lists recycle bin, AMD, ATI, config.msi, Dell, documents and settings, downloads, and fraps. And you see once it gets to frap, fraps, it ends the loop. And you can see this message box shows up and it says, I found it exiting the loop now. So uh, go ahead and close that out. I'll explain it one more time, and then that'll be it. So start off clearing the list, which is pretty obvious. Then we start our for each loop. So for each string folder. Um, so we declared the variable str uh, string folder as a string um, inside of our for each loop um, in my dot computer dot file system dot git directories, which is just something built into um, dot net that you can use to get um, directories obviously inside the person's computer and then parentheses in quotation marks we just type c colon black backslash so it gets the directories in c colon black backslash and then um, we went ahead list data dot items dot add so we added string folder to this box right here it just it'll go ahead and add string folder and then inside of our for each loop we have a nested um, we've nested an if statement inside of it so if string dot compare so obviously we're going to compare a string a lot of this code is self-explanatory so if string dot compare and then we're going to compare string folder to this uh, absolute string right here which means it's not stored in a variable it's just using it to compare it for then and then it'll get rid of it so if string folder um, is the same as c colon backslash fraps um, if it's true if they're the same as true, um, which will equal zero, 
So if it's true, it'll equal zero, and if it's false, then it'll equal one, um, or something else. Uh, then, so if then, message box dot show. I found the loop. I'm exiting the. I found it. I'm exiting the loop now. So it's just a simple message box saying that we found it and we're exiting the loop. And then we set the title of the loop. So you can set the title by comma, uh, comma, space, and then whatever you want the title to be inside quotation marks. And then we just use exit for, which will end this for loop, and then end the if statement. So go ahead, practice this um, with the for loop for now. I'll be teaching you it with the do loop in my next tutorial. Uh, get comfortable with this code. Um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And um, keep watching.